I'll agree. Here we are at the uh, 2012 First Michigan Fray in Gaylord, Michigan, and uh, we're going to do the interviews now. All right, glad to meet you guys. Name, name, where are you from? My name is Bruce. And I'm Karen Silverthorne. Okay, and where are you guys from? We're from Fraser, Michigan, which is down south, um, southeast corner of Michigan, about a four-hour drive. Okay. Uh, how long have you been mushroom hunting? Never. Never. This both is newbies? on my bucket list. I've gone out on my own and found maybe two or three, but that's it. Okay. Well, so we're excited. You're going to learn a lot for sure and, uh, uh, and have some fun, make some new friends, and have some good food. So yep. that's what it's all about. We're looking forward to all it. All right. Pleasure meeting you. Thanks. Uh, Tom Kurzuk, uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. All right, glad to have you back from last year's foray. Yeah, thank you. Glad and, to be back. Yep. And uh, how long have you been mushroom hunting? Oh, ten years. Okay. Well, last year, pretty good year. A very good. Year. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, sound, year ever. Sounds good. I'm. I'm not. I don't think we have any worry of breaking that last year's record today. But we'll go out there and do the best we can. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. Hi, I'm Randy. I'm from uh, Wetmore, Michigan. That's up in the UP. Hey. How long have you been mushroom hunting? I've been mushroom hunting seriously for about a year, and I've yet to find a morale, and I just don't think I'm doing it right, so I <laughs> hope to get that taken care of today. All right. I'm sure you're going to learn a lot. Pleasure, pleasure meeting you finally in person, and uh, let's go out and have a fun fun day today. Thank you very much, Thank Chris. You. Yeah. Okay. Hi. <laughs> What a crew. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Name and where you're from. Uh, my name is Lynn Shabowski from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Okay. I'm his wife, Sue. All right. I'm Marie, and I'm also from Harrisburg. Okay. Yeah. I'm Marie. <laughs> I'm All right. So you guys came from Pennsylvania to Michigan. Yeah. yeah. Well, the Pennsylvania fray didn't go so well. Uh, so oh. you didn't miss out on that. Okay. Um, terrible year. Um, so, but we, we should do a lot better today here. Um, how long have you been mushroom hunting? Uh, since about 1986, we built a house in a mountain, and uh, fortunately, there's some morels right behind the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's when we started. All right, how about you guys? Well, actually, I started in well, 1970s. I went to Joe's Restaurant in Reading, Pennsylvania, fell in love with the idea of uh, morels and mm -hmm. mushroom hunting. Yep. And then I met him, and he's a mushroom hunter. All right, <laughs> yeah, well, pretty good. Well, my grandfather, I grew up in the uh, hard coal regions in northeastern Pennsylvania, a lot of ethnic folks there. Uh -huh. And I picked mushrooms with my grandfather. I probably, I don't know, 1955 might have been the first time. Okay. All right. Well, cool. Uh, well, even though you've hunted a lot, a long time, I'm sure you're going to learn a lot. And, uh, Looking forward to it. And have some fun and have some good food. So you stand some friends. Great. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, you bet, Chris. I'm Phil. I'm from Creed, Illinois. All right. And you've been on many forays with us, haven't you? Yeah, I was. Some, uh, some good and some bad? Mostly good. Yeah. We were at the, uh, the Georgia Motherload last year. Uh -huh. And then we did Indiana and uh, Illinois. So this is my first one this year. Okay. Tried, tried to make Eau Claire, but I'm, my back was giving me some trouble. That's, that's no good. <laughs> got yeah, to gotta go to the chiropractor or whatever on that. So, uh, well, glad to have you here. And uh, it's a different condition, mainly just ash here. But uh, we'll, we'll show you what to do, and I'm sure you'll do good. Look forward to it. Thanks a lot, Phil. Claude Crumpa, Maumee, Ohio. All right. How long have you been mushroom hunting? Since I was a little kid. Okay. Mainly, mainly just morels or other stuff? Yeah, my grandmother taught me morels and uh, wild asparagus when I was little. And okay. Stuck ever since. All right. Well, there might be some other edibles out there, too, on dead logs and stuff. So if we see something, we'll help you. I'm definitely looking new, for new ramps, stuff. too. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Good to meet you. Thanks right. a lot. Isa Rudlinski, Chicago. All right. And Mate Rudlinski from Chicago. All right. How long have you guys been mushroom hunting? Um... Mushroom hunting. We're, we're very amateur mushroom hunters. Okay. Uh, we've got some burrells, I guess, uh, uh, in, the lads, fall. Yeah, in the fall. Well, well, you went with your parents when you were yes. a kid. Yes. Uh -huh. So, but we have lots of experience in eating uh, burrells. Very delicious. That's okay. why we're here. <laughs> All right. All right. So, um, the accent is Polish. Yes. Uh, see, I, I have a Polish friend, so that's how I knew. Um, <laughs> and the ski sort of gives it away. Too. Well, yeah. That's true. <laughs> but yeah, the. Popinky, you know yes. what that is, mm -hmm. and uh, that's uh, that's actually uh, one of my favorite mushrooms in the fall. Mm. And um, so, yeah, my my friend always had a tradition of, uh, of popinky in the in the Thanksgiving and Christmas yeah. dishes, or whatever. Yeah, supposedly in Wisconsin every year there's a few Polish people that need to have their um, <laughs> kidneys and blood dilated. Yeah, probably so. <laughs> yeah, because there's some mushrooms here that 
that are similar to back in Poland, yeah, but they're not, exactly, but they're not the same. Not, yeah, yeah. yeah, they're very poisonous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> That's why we're here with the experts. It's, it's a pleasure meeting you. We'll have some fun. You're right. going to learn a lot for sure. Definitely. Thanks All a lot. Right. Yep. Carl Dell, I'm from uh, Dearborn, Michigan. Joe Montney, I'm from Dearborn, Michigan. All right, and Carl, you're definitely a newbie, right? Yep, first time, first time, never, never eaten a uh, morel mushroom, you, never picked one. You held one for the first time last night. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you showed me my first morel. So kind of weird looking, huh? Yeah, you, you broke. Yeah, I was not gonna say that on camera. <laughs> broke the mold. <laughs> I was gonna the mold. <laughs> No problem. No. Well, hopefully you're gonna learn a lot. And we'll have some fun and have some good food, meet some friends, and that's what it's all about. Yes, it is. Looking forward to it. Let's get out there and have some fun then. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Sue Roberts from Toledo, Ohio area. And how long have you been mushroom hunting? Oh, about four years. Okay. Love just, it. Just morels or other stuff? Just morels. Okay. Well, if we find anything else, we'll we'll pick them too and identify them. And there's a, there's a lot of other animals out there right now too. So. I just know not to eat anything. I don't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully you're going to learn along this trip. All right. All right. Thank Pleasure you. Pleasure meeting you. you Thanks. Too. Thank Tony Breeden. <laughs> I'm now from Mequon, Wisconsin. I used to live in Georgia. All right. Been yeah. on some Georgia mother loads down there. Yeah. This is my my fourth one with you so one in uh, Tennessee two in Georgia and now, now Michigan yep well I, I appreciate you coming it's good to see you again and you know the you know the system so yeah. we'll get out there and knock them dead yeah let's go kill them all right, that's <laughs> right Tony. Ken Schulker Elmhurst Illinois how long have you been mushroom hunting never another newbie <laughs> another newbie all right well so you're a morel version, and let's let's try our best to break your virginity today. So. I'm thinking we will. All right, good deal. Thanks. Let's go out there and do what we can. Good. Hey, All Chris. Right. Back from last year. What's Back from Michigan morel foray last year. All yes. Right. Well, we're heading there right now. I'm right? not a newbie anymore. Uh, you were last year, though, right? <laughs> oh, I certainly was. <laughs> a lot warmer. Did, a lot. did that addict you or what? Oh, heck yes. <laughs> Probably heck have yes. to go to morel meetings now and everything else. Oh, uh, maybe. Morel Anonymous. Maybe after this trip. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. Well, good to see you back. Let's go. Well, have thank fun. you. I'm ready. All Let's right, go. Thanks, Becky. So you guys have, to have a couple radios. Anybody else have radios? I'm gonna hand out two more radios. Um, okay. Now. Now one. And uh, so GPS. You know, if you have a handheld GPS or a radio, um, you guys are good. I don't want anybody to get lost because you can walk a long, a long way. You can walk a long way. To, you know, not going the wrong direction. So, in any event, somebody, if you don't have a radio or a handheld GPS, then be with somebody <laughs> with a radio or, or handheld GPS. Just as a precaution. Should be in smaller groups anyway and not get isolated and separated. <clears throat> um, I'm going to, I'm walking in, it's about a 0.23 of a mile to a spot over here that, that uh, I found some really nice grays under last year, um, under a little ash. This, these popple trees, these, these, it, it got completely logged off like maybe 10 years ago, 12 years ago, and these little popples have come back up. And this is a condition that most people have no idea that morels grow in. They are uh, uh, black morels are just thick in here, but but yellows do grow occasionally also. And um, but it, when you, if we can find a you know some small that you know you would think a big ash tree, but actually in this kind of condition, if you can just have a small ash tree, and there'll be a flush of morels around them a lot of times too. Um, in this kind of, where it got logged off and everything. So this is a, one of my secrets that a lot of people have no idea. Like people coming from Ohio and up, you know to come up to Michigan, if they if they're hunting morels, they would never ever come here. And and uh, this particular spot here, in one day last year, we found 2,300 black black morels. We're not going to do that this year. You're going to see how dry it is. Um, usually, there's several places on that road, that dirt road that we came in on, that's got you know, you might even have been afraid to, to cross because they're so wet. But it just dries a bone, and um, so what what happens is the mycelium when it starts putting up morels, little babies, it starts cutting several of them off, and maybe just that one. Mycelium might only have one coming up to put all of its energy into that because there's just not enough moisture to, to 
have more. So probably going to what we find is probably going to be onesies and you know not a lot of clumps. I, I'll, I'll be surprised if there are because of the moisture content. But uh, let's hope for the best and uh, you know, try to find some slight slopes uh, in a nice dark pool uh, where, the, where the moisture is still at. So and, on the uh, south side of the slope, which side? Is <coughs> probably the, the north side north would be the, the, the dampest in valleys. And, like there's a lot of little nooks and there's a lot of there's a lot of humps in in this landscape and in those little humps you know the moisture most, most is trapped like in the bottom of the hump and um, <clears throat> but anyway I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the the conditions and the, the trees and all that like like I said these are the popples um, and uh, you know it, like I said it's it's a, a situation that that just it's a secret no, there's just hardly hardly anybody even comes in here to hunt morels and then the other thing is if we go on back. Uh, uh, about a half a mile back, the woods totally changes into, you know, normal woods with bigger with bigger trees and bigger ash and stuff. So, you know, we're gonna, you know, I I would say for uh, it's what twelve or so it's ten o'clock. Yeah, it's twelve o'clock. So we'll, we'll it's uh, ten after ten. We'll meet back at quarter after twelve. That gives us two hours. And uh, I would say, you know, everybody can go in this direction, that direction, and this direction, but stay off of this side because after lunch we'll hit over there um, and we'll go deeper and, and uh, where the bigger woods is back there after lunch. So we'll come back here at 12.15. I got everybody's drinks and lunch and whole nine yards. We'll have a nice picnic. We've got some shade. It's a nice pretty day. And um, we got one more thing we got to do and that's a group picture before we take off. The famous group picture. So. Uh, Make sure that you can see the camera because this is the one that I have to upload real quick and uh, send off to the authorities in case anybody gets lost. <laughs> what dairy do you send it to? Is it flashing? It's not. It's no. not. I must not have did it. They find me on that, it'll be here real quick. <laughs> Try it again. Here we go. All right, so be back at 12:15. If anybody wants to uh, tag along, I'll, I'll go slow to start off with and uh, do some teaching and tree identification and stuff like that. <laughs> the yellows will fruit on the on these two. Um, the blacks are just scattered all over the place in here um, in the early season, but uh, uh, the yellows uh, will be thin, thinner scattered. But like I said, we need to find some smaller ash in mixed in with these popples for the for the grays and yellows, and uh, that's what we're looking for. And like I said, there was one really nice clump fruiting last year on an ash. So see if we can find that again. It's not out of the question that there could be some blacks because they it's been very cool and and they could have uh, possibly refruited. This one here is an ash that's just barely starting to leave out the top now. This one here is a yep. bigger one? Uh-huh. So we need to look good around that one. That's what we're looking for, for the, for the yellows.
This tree right here is an eye. In the middle. That one right there. Yeah, where there's like an eye. Two little cups. Yeah. Are these also? No. They have a little bit of a pattern on their bark. And it can be as far as 15, 20 feet out from the tree. Them when they're just leaking, or will they stay with them even when they're cooling? Probably a polypore. Yeah. Nothing of any edibility or anything, but just a just a polypore. But if you find something that's that's uh, soft and fleshy on dead wood like that, then it's probably edible. I don't. Some left. Some maple. Right in that uh, under that one tree. Oh, I lost him. I think it was the farther, but I'm not. He must have took off. Oh, here he is. Yeah, he's. He's a big one. Come out the sun today. Yeah, I got it on film. What is this? That's trillium. Yeah. Yeah, when it, when it's blooming is a good indication of morel time. Yeah. yeah. That clump of ash there, it's a clump of them. He had about 30 grays and yellows under last year. This is a, a nice example of the ash. It's a clump of them right here. This is the one I had marked. It had about 30 Not yellows here. and grays under it last year, just scattered around. Yeah, all these, all these, this whole clump is ash. Yeah, you found some good fresh oysters. Yeah, good yeah I, thought those are, I thought those were. Yeah, those are oyster mushrooms. That's good news. All right. If there's enough moisture for some oysters, there's got to be some morels around somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Tom's got a nice thing of oysters, Becky. Okay, I'm ready for the ladies. Hey guys, I got uh, turkey and ham sandwiches, and there's mayo and mustard, the uh, condiments you can put your own on. There's a couple of peanut butter and jellies if nobody likes meat, and then uh, pickles, olives, all kinds of other goodies there. Bananas, chips. The drinks are in the cooler. I'm getting that out right now.
So this is a classic dead elm, um, and there's so few and far between around here, I wanted to show you what to look for. Um, when, when an elm tree dies, it gets Dutch elm disease, and the bark starts slipping on it after the first and second year. Um, this is absolutely a classic. This could, in a good year, could literally have 10 pounds of morels under one tree. And tree uh, uh, that size of a dead elm um, in Wisconsin just a week ago, I, I literally found like five pounds under a tree like that. Um, and they're just big, huge yellows. But uh, no, no mushrooms around this one. I don't, I don't spot any. And sometimes they can be out 20, 30 feet away. But I, I, I took a quick glance and didn't see anything. But uh, this is just a classic example. I wanted to show you guys the condition. We're about a half mile away from where we're going to be parking. But since we were going right by this, I wanted you to see a classic example of uh, what you look for. for. Down further south in Michigan and then Ohio and Illinois and Wisconsin, they're just, you know, elms like this are much, much more common and there could be mother loads under them. I found 37 pounds under one big giant four foot diameter dead elm in Minnesota one, one time. How long will they stay standing dead like that? Um, they'll st they'll lose more and more bark each year. So you know, usually when the bark is all gone, it, you're not going to find morels. It's the first two couple years. It's uh, after they die. Okay. And uh, but one, I mean, one like that is absolutely prime hmm. situation. And uh, when it's got when it's got that much bark and everything on it, that's an absolute perfect condition right there. Hmm. But it's it's dry. It's a, not a good year. And. Uh, they're just not going to grow. I'll come back next year and maybe there'll be some under it. Hmm. So did you put it in your GPS? <laughs> well, my other one's a half mile down the okay, road. so, so you know can't miss it, right? Elm as to an oak. Um, it's just, I just commit them to memory. It's the, it's the little thin branches that they have and the way the bark is shaped and, uh, and the way the bark peels when it dies. Um, so like Dutch elm disease death. Dutch elm disease. However, there is something that we can eat, and I'm going to pick them. This is uh, milkweed pods, milkweed shoots, and I have a, a good recipe for this milkweed. Any kind of milkweed? Or a particular kind of milkweed? No, just the common milkweed. Okay. Common milkweed. How do you make milkweed? Um, yeah. Yeah. So now what do we look for? Just more of the okay. ash? Yep, there's big ash in here. It's a totally different type of woods on both sides of the road. I, you know, I see some big ash over there. It's just now leaving out a couple of them. Some back to the left. And there's one right there that hasn't leaved out yet. Right across the street, if you call it a street. And then there's a whole bunch of them back up in here. All This is a really predominant ash woods here. And uh, I've always done really well with yellows and grays. Uh, lots of ash trees in here. I've always done really good with grays and yellows. Uh, it's 1.30, so let's, let's try it for two hours. Uh, you can go on the other side of the road, back this way, or up through this way. Um, it's a huge area, and, uh, and like, it's a completely different type of woods. A lot more mature stuff in here. There's a lot, it's a lot more slopes and hills, and uh, you know maybe we can find some nooks and crannies that have some moisture. Yeah, if anybody finds anything, you know, call on the radio or yell out. Um, at least we'll know that we're finding something or whatever. If we're still close and everybody, if we're st everybody's still close and, and we find some, then maybe we can go see them. Good luck. Yep. All right, we got some nice oyster mushrooms fruiting up here. At least it's something edible. Good. 
Oh, they're nice and fresh, too. Oh, you got another batch up here. Yeah, those are nice ones. Yeah. I was like, I walked away, I didn't know when I lost you, and I was getting slightly paranoid. Oh, look, everybody got something. This is great. Yeah, we got a lot of oysters. Yeah, oysters. Oh, a lot, yeah. Well, you found a whole bunch. This is the, the morale. <laughs> That's, that is a morale. Uh, this one, oh, this one kind of is falling apart. That's the mushroom I found. It was by a log, but it wasn't on Ooh, the that's log. Yeah, that's Pluteus cervinus. That's fond mushroom or deer mushroom. It's edible as well. All right. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, it's it's nice and chewy like a portobello or something. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. a nice, nice big fat one. Yeah. And then it's yeah, uh, oh. oyster mushroom. This is a fond Ooh, mushroom or deer mushroom. Oysters. It's edible. It has pinkish gills. Deer mushroom. That looks delicious. Pluteus cervinus. Sometimes I eat the steak. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah, it has a good smell to it. Since you guys are leaving, if you want to take them home since they're edible. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Hey, if he paints the deer poop, that's where the mushrooms are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I remember this being a much bigger circle, but um, yeah, <laughs> it's been about three or four years since I've been here. Oh boy! Hey Sue, can I borrow some of your bug spray? Patty Monroe from uh, Springfield, Ohio. All right, Steve. Ever heard Springfield, Ohio? Uh, how long y'all been mushroom hunting? He's never been. Uh, I, I, I've been a long time. <laughs> I ago. have, but it's been a lot of years. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We used to come up here. Well, let's go out and hope you'll learn something and have some fun today. Yeah, I just want him to find one mushroom. Yeah, all right, all well, let's give it a try. Satellite has not kicked in yet here, so just it gets trying. But uh, anyway, this is just a hunch of different fruiting. This is this is wet and green here, and I found I'm if I'm it's been three or four years, but I've, I'm thinking it's this way. But I got to wait on my satellite here to kick in because I got a spot mark, but. There was a, a nice patch of yellows that I found late in the season, and they were, and it was it was up in there, and it, it was in the midst of these uh, aspens. Uh, they were they were coming coming through on the aspens. So it's just a hunch I had something different. I was going to try something different, and I don't want to waste a lot of time here. Like I said, I remember this turnaround being a big, much bigger circle, but uh, it'll be fun getting back out of here. But I've got I've got all sorts of uh, places, and and so we'll we'll take like what time is it right now it's almost five after ten five after ten so let's let's not go out let's be back at uh, 1035 you know give it 30 minutes um, come on satellite at, le at least I get a direction I'm pretty sure it's a it's over that way because I remember pulling in and and at dead end and I'm, I remember going to the left oh boy yeah, I've only got two bars Yes, it was on the, a little bit of a slope, and and there was a about a. Do they get big? I've never hunted for like. Yeah, they were big. They were pretty good size, and the, it was about a probably a fifty foot circle. The no, it was in these aspens. some DOT work down on this road. What the hell was that? 
that? Phones and shit fell on the oh floor. Oh my god. There's tons of ash in there. I gotta go check out a few I see already. I just gotta go see what's going on. No, nah, I'm not gonna mess with them. I only got three anyway. Yeah. No. It's a beautiful ash. Practice, huh? That's yeah, right. Man. It's a beautiful yeah. ash there. This is a, he found it. Okay, I was in recording. No, we're recording. Okay. Yeah, he, he found a dryad saddle. Uh, it has a, if you smell it, it smells like cucumbers a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and these, these are edible. They're good mushrooms called pheasant backs or, or uh, dryad saddle. Uh, Polyporous squamosis is a scientific name. Hold it up so we can see it. They're really good, though. Did I cause Alright, I got sauteed mushrooms going in for the jalapeno. The bacon's already done. We got uh, the soup is on. So we're in the process. We've got uh, milkweed shoots are boiling. And we've got a lot of activity going on here. You actually are doing the asparagus somehow? Only because they're up here. Okay, I got you. No, well, I got nobody's you. touching these, and they came in. I can in. see she gave you pretty, pretty oh, precise yeah. and strong. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I could be fired. <laughs> yeah, that's always a possibility. All right. And what, these are what, just yellows? Or? Those are yellows, big yellows under oh, dead elm trees. Yeah. We have a whole assembly line going on here. Yeah. What's the story on these? Those are edible. They're good. When they're young, they're tender and they're good. They're good to eat. Yeah. What is this? Those are oyster mushrooms. This is an oyster. Uh -huh. and that's how they grow. What do you find these on? On dead logs. On yeah. dead logs, mm -hmm. really? Yeah. Is there anything poisonous that looks like them? Nothing or? like them at all. No. Okay. No, no poisonous look like. All right, so I'm making the mushroom soup. Um, we're going to put morels and uh, uh, oyster mushrooms that we found and dried saddle in it, um, as well as a little bit of uh, dried mushrooms. I've got uh, some with me. These are some uh, lobster mushrooms I'm putting in the soup. And then I've got some porcini. I've got black trumpets and uh, a few other species I'm putting in the soup. All, all from the fall. Actually, this is hen of the woods. Hen of the woods is going in. And this is a two-color bleat. I'm gonna put some of them in. There's all, gonna be all kinds of tastes and textures in this. And then I've got black trumpets. As well as the fresh mushrooms that we found. So it's going to be one heck of a soup. All right. Okay, guys, the first little greens appetizer is ready. This is milkweed shoots uh, done in bacon grease with bacon bits on top. So you guys can try it out, see what you see if you like it. Actually, you guys are my guinea pigs. I've never done the recipe this way, so I hope it turned out. What dandelion with bacon grease? No, it's uh, it's milkweed shoots. Oh, okay. That's why I was slamming on the brake stopping yesterday. Okay, those are seconds I'm seeing, so you must like them. It's awesome. They're very good. 
So, so milkweed shoots. Uh, how's everybody like them? Milkweed shoots. Very. Yeah, really good, Chris. Delicious. All right. Very good. Now you see why I was slamming on the brakes. Yeah. Very good. I love it. It's dark greens. They're delicious. Uh -huh. oh, did you add some, sir? I did. I tasted some. Is it mine? Chris, is well, that garlic? A little bit of them is garlic and salt. Okay, yeah. so that's garlic, not your leaf. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, that's garlic, yeah. Okay. He's cooking. He's cooking. All right. Okay. All right. The jalapenos are, are popping, crackling, and the soup is boiling. How hot is it, Chris? Very hot. What you putting in? I'm putting some dry hat saddle in there. Just the edges because the rest of it's a little tough. The one piece was young, but this is a little, getting a little bit tough. So we got oysters, morels, dried saddle, some one pond mushroom, and a little bit of uh, uh, portobellas, and uh, I'm going to put some other dried mushrooms in there too. That's for that's Alfredo for the pasta. Looking very good. Soup is looking good. Some nice pieces of morels in there. Main base is uh, chicken stock, okay. and then cream, and then uh, it's got asparagus and onions and and uh, one stick of butter, okay. and then uh, all the different mushrooms and minced garlic and uh, a couple secret ingredients that I don't tell. I'm just kidding. But then after, after after it's all uh, done and ready to serve, you put the you spread out some of the ramps on top. They're uncooked. Put them on top of the that way when you dip them, you get some fresh, crunchy ramps in your spoon. You put ramps in there? No, no, no cook. Just fresh on top. Fresh on top. It's just about done. I'd like to see it rolling a little bit better. Soup is done. We're going to put some fresh minced ramps right on top. That way it comes out in your spoon as you're eating it. Nice crunchy ramps to top it off. The rest of them we'll use on top of the pasta. So it's ready to serve. Okay guys, the soup is ready. And I can guarantee you it's the best soup you've ever had in your life. And I will personally guarantee that. Bowls and spoons are right there. Oh, Look at that, man. Wow. That is fabulous. It's got more morels than anything, but it's got it's got uh, oysters that we found and it's all kinds of good stuff. Whoops, it's gnocchi. 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 Man, that's good. Excellent. Is this in your book? Yep. I do it. I do it a little different every time. I, I don't normally put the gnocchi in there, but I saw it and I grabbed it. And I'm spontaneous right. like that. Fast is good. Yep. Anytime. Is this a, is this a roller? Or That's oyster right there. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. excellent. How's the soup? The best as always. Rocking. Good. good soup. That's the best mushroom soup I've ever had. <laughs> It really is. I told you. I it told really you. Is. I was confident. Hands down. Hands down. All right, we got jalapeno poppers now. All right. You guys like the soup? Oh. Love it. All right, we got jalapeno poppers now. Soup good? All right. 
How's the soup? Great. It was excellent. Very, right, very There's nice. There's a little bit left, so have some more, and then the jalapeno poppers are ready to go now. All right. Thank you. That's really good. Wow. By far, this is everybody's favorite. This right here, yeah. Jalapeno poppers. Now, what kind of mushrooms are in here? Those, those are uh, oysters and morels. Yeah, you got your rolling. Not gonna go. So cornmeal and flour. My teeth are just a little. I thought that's what I was eating in the soup. <laughs> it's it's meaty. It's kind of it meaty. Is yeah. Wait on it. Uh, I mean, did your dad take you out? And I mean, how did you first get the? Um, my dad grew up in Kentucky, and uh, he hunted ginseng, and uh, we we grew and raised ginseng as a kid. Well, so you were kind of used to getting things from the nature, and yeah, we had we lived in the wood, we had a woods, and so I, I knew about the trees and and all that, you know, since I was a kid, and uh, I didn't get into other mushrooms until about I don't know 15 years ago, when I started self being self-taught basically. All the other mushrooms. So that, uh, what did you call that cap that Joe found, the, uh, the saddle cap? That's a dryad saddle. And uh, was that in the uh, in the soup too? Yep. And it's in the pasta. All right, what am I doing? Putting this back up there. That this is basically done. All i got to do is put this cheese in there. Zero calorie um, <laughs> special cheese I can order in from China. <laughs> let's let's see the label of that. That's, that's Crap. Right. Why is no, it going to Walmart no, no and leave on it? No, 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 ca no calorie cheese. Yeah. <laughs> why, why does it say Walmart? Why does it look like Walmart brand? And there's, there's, a sticker. <laughs> there's, only one, there's only one pound Holy of butter cow, in there, too. Man, look at that. Oh my god, dude. There's only one pound of butter. Oh, that's dietetic. That's why we have the cheese. That's why we have to have the wintergreen tea afterwards to calm your stomach. <laughs> Holy cow. Uh oh. Uh -oh. oh, somebody rescued that. I'm always fighting some kind of weather. <laughs> now that's some Alfredo. You would have kicked yourself in the butt if you were wrong. That's pretty good. Alright, that's a good change for monsters. Hello. Hello. No fair, I'm on camera. <laughs> Alright, if somebody those. could assist me and take the lids off of the of those uh, right, pastas.
Yeah, that one's a little overflowed, but... It'll still leak the same. Yes. It'll leak the same. <laughs> All right, one more thing. The green onion's over there. Could you pass the plate, Tony? Of the onions, the onions. Onion, onion. Bowl. Sizzling in the pan. We got our steaks going on over there. Man. Yeah. All right, we got fried morels right here. Fried morels in uh, cornmeal and flour. And I'm going to try the first one to make sure it's okay. Let's see here. No, they're not okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Get them back, Mark. All right, you want to give, give my reaction to yes. the first taste here? First taste of a fried morel. Ooh. Oh, my God. That's not like a normal mushroom. That is so good. That is so good. <laughs> and it does not taste just like chicken. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> Okay, the steaks and pasta are ready, and I got one more batch of morels frying up, but come and get your steaks and pasta over here. He who hesitates will is lost. Enough for an army, so take all you want. All right, how's the pasta? Excellent. Excellent. Outstanding. Excellent. The best, like it? The best freaking pasta I've ever Good stuff? Good stuff. Excellent. Real good. All right. Wow. You got a steak No, I don't. Randy, how you like it? Very good. You know, guys like the pasta? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yeah, I haven't tried it yet. Okay. Yum. How's it tasting? Very good. Meal. Good. Very good. Excellent. Right. Thank you. Thanks for good. Yeah. I would have never thought to put the normal piece. I've done it once or twice before, and in one of my recipes in my cookbook, I, I've got that, but not with that soup. It's a different soup. Nice but I, ha I just happened to see him yesterday, and I thought, well, I'm spur of the moment. So. Yeah, great. Well, everybody's quieted down, so they must be enjoying the food or something. <laughs> <laughs> Can't talk with your mouth full. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Good job. All right. Okay. I'm glad you like it. Wish we could have found some mushrooms, Is but. Is it permissible to lick the plates? <laughs> Absolutely. It's so good. We found two two good edible, no three three good edible species of mushrooms. That one fond mushroom, and then the bunch of oysters in the dryad saddle today, and. uh too bad the morels weren't there. They just a uh, bad season. But that's no, that's no. Way no, it was really good. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, that's better than dandelion salad. All right, Tony. Closing comments. I had a great time. Yeah, I spent a lot of good time in the woods. Got to see my friend Chris. Um, I'll definitely be back. Hopefully, I want to get to Moray. On the West Coast, so it'll be my first time. And I've never been out there, and I'd, yeah. I'd really like to do that. So, All right. Thanks for having me, and uh, I'll see you next year. I'm sure you enjoyed the food. I did. The food was awesome. All right. Well, be safe going back. Don't okay. fall asleep. I won't. All right. Take care. If y'all are not in a big, big hurry, the wintergreen tea will be done in about five minutes. Sure. Well, where we're staying is uh, a mile and a half away. Okay. Okay, good. Good deal.
About five minutes if you guys aren't in too big of a hurry, the winter green tea will be ready. Okay. Give it a try. Okay, I'll give it a try. Yeah. All right. That's right. About five minutes the winter green tea will be ready. If you want to try that. Yeah, I never got to try this. About five minutes the winter green tea will be ready if you want to try that. Ah. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, we picked it yesterday. Yeah. Where are you going with that? Where are you going with that? Where are you going? Huh? Hey, buddy. You having fun? Better go get it. Come on, go get it. Go get it. You didn't see it. Glad you guys came. All right, closing comments uh, as you're drinking the winter green tea. <laughs> well, I don't need to settle my stomach. It's excellent. Everything. You did. All right. It's wonderful. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It really is. Great. Yeah. Nothing was anything but good. The All flavors right. are... Good, good stuff, huh? Yeah. All good, right. Good, good well, shit. <laughs> well, look, us, look, look us up next season. Hey. We'll It'll go, be a better season. It's got to be, be a checking. better season It's got to be a better than this. It's got to be. It's gotta be. It's gotta Absolutely. Be. We'll be safe going back. Yeah. Well, we're going, we're going to stay another day. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, you can come try some winter green tea. Whoever wants to try some tea? Yep. It's, re it's ready for you up here? Go back down 131 to 32. So, how did you do that? Did you take a pot of water and just, just, you just, you just boiled it and strained it? And I added a little bit of sweetener. That's about just a little tiny bit of sweetener. Pretty good Fantastic. stuff. Yeah. 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 It's just like a treat on the side of the road. It is. It's just <laughs> Well, you just go down 131. <laughs> you guys better go get some tea. Okay, I'm going to. Did you try it? You like it? I like I'm, show, it. Yeah. I'm showing them last year's pictures. I'm showing them last year's oh, pictures. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hey Chris, it was great hunting with you and everybody else. And Learn anything? I, I sure did. I learned uh, I learned my tree recognition a lot better. I can look in the woods and from a lot, lot, lot farther distance I can recognize the trees I need to be looking for in the areas and the habitat. And that's, mm -hmm. that's that's really the key. So now I can go well and try to find some uh, some my, some of my own areas to hunt in my area. So sure. Really appreciate we'll it. Keep in touch. I'm sure you will anyway. So just. Okay. Be safe going back. Okay, thank you. Pleasure finally meeting you. Yep, same here. You learn anything? Yeah, I learned a lot. Uh -huh. You taught a really good program, not not just about morels, you know, a lot, a lot of other stuff. It was very informative. Yeah. I really had a good time. All right. And I loved your food. All right, glad. It was outstanding. Very unique, some of the stuff, huh? Oh, outstanding. Yeah. I got a kick out of picking the picking the winter green and <laughs> having the tea at the yeah. end. That was really nice. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Closing comments. The only thing I can say is great, Chris. <laughs> when can we do it again soon? Uh, I have them all the time. I have phrase all the I'll time. I'll tell you, I, I can't. Yeah. Words cannot express. Yeah. It was good. Good. Delicious. And that tea was excellent. That complimented everything. Good. Just glad, I'm glad you enjoyed it. It's pretty neat just picking stuff off the side of the road, huh? It sure is. Yep. That's what we were just talking about over here. The guy over here in the radio said he wanted to lose. Great time. Learn a lot, even though I didn't. Pick anything, but uh, food was awesome. Had some different stuff than last year, huh? Yes. Yeah. The tea was awesome. Alfredo and the tea was fabulous. Never had the tea before. I think we need to bring some vodka and vanilla ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good, and, huh? and after dinner, toddy. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that would yeah. make it very nice. So, right. we'll had a great time. Might have to try that. I'll All even right. bring the vodka. <laughs> All right, good deal. We'll try it next year. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Great food, great fellowship. The foray was uh, rough going, but better luck next year. We'll be back. All right, some some good unique food, huh? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the food was excellent. The company was great, and it's always fun to be in the woods, no matter whether you get the mushrooms or not. Yeah. Hey, uh, great uh, foray, uh, with good time, and it's not just finding mushrooms. It's uh, coming together and uh, learning things and meeting people. That's right. Having new friends. And... Well. Pete said, except next year we're coming back and we're going to
picks them wrong. Look at the scholar. <laughs> Damn right. You saw the pictures from last year. Yes, we did. Oh, yeah. yes, we Can't did. be two bad years in a row. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's a pleasure meeting you guys. You'll be safe. Thanks. I couldn't possibly do everything I'm doing without her help. Pardon? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I said nothing. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they're laughing. We know her. We know her. No, I used to do one foray a week. Um, you know, this year we've done several during, during the week, too, and, we, and traveled on to another location. And uh, it's been... Uh, well, there's no way I could have done that. It was hard enough doing one a week by myself. Um, but now, you know, we've done 
there's only so much spring, so we had to cover a lot of ground, and you know, we would have some of the, so this year sometime we would we would have the, the dinner, the final day dinner, you know, on a Sunday, and then have meet and greet Sunday night in a different state. You have to take off and drive out. And, four hours. Yeah, drive four hours to the next location. That was fun. And I made it 15 minutes in time for the, you know, for the meet and greet, so. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been uh, on the road for three and a half months so far. Still have a little over a month to go and, uh, before we get back home. But uh, yeah, anyway, so, <laughs> yeah. so we'll hunt today, break off about 3.30, uh, and then, you know, if you want to attend the dinner at, at Cafe Sante at 6 o'clock tonight, and then 8 o'clock tonight, um, right here, outdoors, um, normally the hotel we stay at, there, and Boyne just is, does not have that many hotels, and to, to be reasonable, I mean, we could have stayed at Boyne Mountain, but it's a way higher from tonight. Um, but anyway, we're going to do an outside presentation. I'm going to, I'm going to have a chair sitting around uh, by the basketball goal there, and I want to be projecting on the on the wall back there because it's nice and shady and dark. And uh, so, eight o'clock tonight, we're going to do the presentation back there, and, uh, and that'll probably last an hour and a half. You do not want to miss the presentation because uh, at least you know we're going to go out. I'm going to teach you the conditions, the trees, the plants associated with morels, and in a few secret areas that a lot of people don't know that morels grow, and at least you're going to see the conditions. If we don't find a lot, you know, I, I, we're just going to hope for the best, but at least you're going to learn from this trip. You don't want to miss the, uh, the presentation. You're going to learn a lot from that. Even if you've hunted morels all your life, you're going to learn a lot uh, from the presentation. And uh, I've had, <clears throat> I had one guy that hunted, has literally hunted for 65 years uh, back uh, uh, a few phrase ago, and he said, I, you, you answered all the questions I always had in my mind, you know, <laughs> now, I, now I know the truth, so uh, uh, anyway, you'll, you'll enjoy the presentation, and then we'll meet back here again in the morning at 8.30, and, uh, and we'll hunt again until around noon or so, and then we're going to do the dinner right there on the water, at, uh, you know, block over um, in the city park there and there's a pavilion, covered pavilion with the grill and picnic tables and all that so it doesn't matter if it's raining or not, you know, we're, we're out of the weather and we'll do our cooking there and all that tomorrow and uh, should be done by three or so tomorrow. <coughs> Anybody have to leave early tomorrow or anything? Everybody, so I won't rush. If nobody has to leave early I might make a uh, a recipe that's in that I haven't done yet on a fray, um, and it's on a it's in my cookbook, and it's a it's a, a mushroom farro, which is a Italian grain. It's kind of it's similar to risotto, risotto, but it's uh, way better. It, the the grain absorbs the mu mushroom flavor, and it's just amazing. And uh, so you guys are going to enjoy that. It takes about an hour or so to prepare by itself, so. So if nobody's in a rush, then I'll try to go ahead and do that tomorrow. Hey, Chris. Yep. All right, here we are at the the second Michigan Foray in 2012. Um, name it where you're from. John Greinke from Clarkston, Michigan. Okay. Mickey Levin from Clarkston, Michigan. And how, how long y'all been mushroom hunting? <laughs> First time. First time. You're absolute newbies. Absolutely. No. Okay. Other than accidentally stumbling on some. Okay. All right. Well, you're going to learn a lot then for sure. And um, once you go on a fun trip like this, you're going to be hooked for life. I'm just warning you, pre-warning you, because we have a lot of fun out there. And uh, meet, meet some new friends and have some good food, interesting new dishes you've never tried before. So you're going to have, have a good time. We're excited. All right, thanks a lot. All right. Nice to meet you. All right, glad to see you guys again. We saw you last fall in Indiana. Uh, name of where you're from. Uh, Alex and Allie Cunningham, Sheridan, Indiana. All right, and how long have you been mushroom hunting? All our, I have all my life, but fairly know. new to me. Last couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, I just saw your dad a couple of weeks ago in Wisconsin, and yeah. and uh, he's he's always gung ho swimmer, <laughs> that's for sure. Yes. So he is. Uh, he's a lot of fun. Yeah. So well, it was a pleasure having you back, and hopefully you're going to learn a lot on this trip too. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Uh, Eddie and Hayden Schmidt. We're from Rockford, Michigan. All right. And you was here last year, right? Uh yes. In 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 Lewiston or in Gaylord. Gaylord. Yeah. Yep. Yep. 
Well, last year was a different situation. How many did we find in the one, in the one day? Uh, it was eight pounds, and then I think a total of eleven. Eleven hundred. Uh, eleven pounds. Oh, I believe it was. Okay. I think it was like thirteen or fourteen hundred or somewhere around. Thirteen there, yeah. or fourteen hundred. There was one day last year that we hit we hit twenty three hundred. Yeah, I saw in, that in one day. Yep. But yeah, it's. Uh, I wish it was like that this year. But at least, at least we're gonna get out in the woods and enjoy the woods and absolutely and, uh, have some day fun. For it too. All right, good to have you back. Thanks, uh, Andy Oxen there from Ann Arbor, Michigan. All right, name Steve Day from Ann Arbor area. Okay, and Tom is missing in action. Mark or Mark? I'm Mark, sorry. Yep. Mark is missing missing in action. Yep. Um, but uh, but Mark was here last year. Yeah. And. Yep. Uh, he said so. he had a great time. Mm -hmm. Learned well, a lot. Yep. And he did fairly well so far this year downstate. Oh yeah. Because he said he just anytime he saw an opportunity to pull off the side of the road mm -hmm. and saw a nice spot, he uh, he did it. And he said he's found like over 300 down there. So mm. that's, that's cool. That's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, nice. let's get out there and hit it. We're gonna hit some some uh, dark woods, so maybe we can have some luck. You just yeah. never know. I mean, I always look for them, but I've never hunted for them. Oh, yeah? I, you know, I have an idea what the, where I'm at uh -huh. for, but I, I really want to zero in on it. Okay. Well, they're, they're definitely area. around certain trees yeah. and stuff like that, so I'll show you all about that. Okay. And you got you got to remember the, the, the kind of tree and yep. conditions and stuff like that. So we'll get you situated. All right. Nice to meet you guys. Yep. All right. Your turn. No. Name and where are you from? Kevin Rose. This is my wife, Cindy. We're from uh, Canton, Michigan. All right. How long have you been mushroom hunting? This is our first time. First time. This is my Christmas present. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, Merry Christmas. You're yeah. definitely, definitely going to learn a lot and uh, have some fun and meet some friends and have some good food. No doubt about we're that. We're definitely looking forward to it. All right. Uh, we're definitely looking to learn. All right. We're well, glad to have you. Let's, let's go out and have fun in the All woods. Right. Good. Thanks. All right. Name it. Where are you from? Julia Grabowski. I'm from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Okay. How long have you been mushroom hunting? I've been dabbling at it since 2010 by myself. Nobody wanted to help me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I gave you a call. Mm -hmm. After I gave you a call, my husband's been telling everybody, and everybody's been coming out of the woodwork, at least 10 people. I, I could have took you. Yeah. But before, they didn't want anything to do with me. <laughs> yeah. So I'm here. Okay. I'm all yours. Well, you're going to learn a lot for okay, sure. Thank Let's have you. fun in the woods. Hi, Jane, Lansing, Michigan. Craig, Lansing, Michigan. All right. We saw you guys last year, and the day you hunted with us last year, how many did we find that day? Oh, 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 oh. 23, 23, so, so, baby. So you was, you, was on, you was on the big record day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what we're going to find today. Too. Yeah. we gotta, we got to break that record. <laughs> yeah. We're going to do what we can on that one. We better, we better have them shipped from California then. Exactly. Good to see you All right. again, Chris. Good to see you, too. Yeah, we'll Let's go you. have some fun in the woods. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay, guys. I got I, I got this covered. Uh, this we're gonna go gather some milkweed shoes. So you guys are gonna learn about milkweed, and uh, I promise after you try it tomorrow, um, you're you're gonna say this is a weed that's in my yard that I've been pulling up, and it's very tasty. So and it's good for you too. It's got a lot of vitamins and stuff in it. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. And you know the you know the fold fold milkweed. I know something that looks like it. Yeah, that will. <laughs> that I pulled up the other day and it wasn't milkweed. <laughs> young shoots is what's really good for greens and then later on in the summer they start you can see they're starting to get some buds on them. they're getting ready to bloom um, after they they get on taller and they have mature blooms there's a, a pod that forms it's called a milkweed pod when those pods are young they're absolutely delicious um, uh, just sauteed or breaded and fried um, before they because they they end up when it gets when the pod gets mature, it's got like like dandelion stuff in you know it's the seeds are formed with like little dandelion things that float around. So you got to get the green pods when they're really young and, and nothing is formed. That's when they're delicious. But right now we're just going to gather the the tops of them and uh, use them for the the greens tomorrow. The 
just snip them off like that. Yep, and you can see the milk coming out of the stem. There's no, there's nothing that you're gonna misidentify with the, the milk coming out like that. Do you, do you uh, just eat them raw? Or? No, you you boil them, uh, boil them, and then I, I'm gonna do a dish with. I'm gonna fry up some bacon, and then leave the bacon grease in the pan, crumple up the bacon, and then after I boil them for about eight to ten minutes, and they're nice and tender, the stem and everything is tender. And then, then I'm going to throw them into the bacon grease and saute them in that for a couple minutes and then put the bacon bit crumbles, some salt, a little bit of minced garlic. You guys are going to love it. Oh, when they're young, yeah, they bacon on it. It's just, it's not really good for raw. Um, the the, the, the pope is good, but the oh, milk yeah. we really is not good raw. Now, uh, Hayden was saying that he was in school because that's where monarchs basically grow. Yes. And he was saying that they, they told him that, uh, that monarchs are toxic because of what they get from the milkweed to other insects. Yes, yeah, so there's there's toxic, like when the, you can't eat a, the mature plant. Okay. It's just young in the spring. Okay. Um, kind of like fiddleheads. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's what they say. I've never tried it and got sick or anything, but that's what they say. Right. Who are they? Yeah, they are the ones that make... So when they're older, they don't have that... They're just that dead. Part. When they're older, uh, so you know... You yeah, I mean, when they're older, they're going to be... Uh, they get about this tall. Oh, dear. Branch 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 right. Just Almost. Huh? Uh, uh, imagine... <laughs> Being on the road with somebody for three and a half months in a car yes, and driving absolutely. like you know across country. We could do that. It is very well, not, uh, you have a little twenty year we together and, you know, a long time. It's a it delicacy, a and I I actually have chefs contacting me wanting me to gather the pods, and uh, and it's I, you know I can get like thirty forty dollars a pound for them. So these are just weeds or perennials. They're you know, people. Now I'll, I'll show you what happens if you don't if you don't clip them off. You know the, the whole thing pulls up and that's even part of the root. So you're damaging the plant. So you, you know definitely a lot better to snip them off and they'll come right back. You're damaging that to your spot. Yep. But like I said, most of these are a lot of times growing. I mean this is you know when they whenever they come in and landscape this they're going to be pulling all these up they're, they're, they're coming up uh, naturally and as weeds basically and it's the same with a lot of greens the poke poke weed is the same thing um, it's a lot of times in scrubby areas along roadsides and stuff like that it grows down south and, uh, how do you prepare the pot uh, the pot you can saute with just butter and garlic or I like to bread them, put a little bit of beer batter on them, and kind of deep fry them, dip them in ranch dressing, and you're in for a treat. No uh, low pale recipes here. Yeah. <laughs> bacon and bacon. Right. No, no pale. No, I used to be a lot thinner than I am now. Oh, and then, and then the jalapenos just did it. Yep, jalapenos and beer is my problem. <laughs> Such a problem. Right in the middle of the thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's 
see. It's 10 o'clock, so we'll go, go to 10.45, and then we'll figure out how to do it from, um, from this point. Everybody with the SUV, probably everybody except yeah. the car, we'll just have to leave the car here and then, because uh, I'm going to be going up this road further. Okay. Um, but on this side of the woods, this is poplars, and um, the, a lot of people would never hunt morels and poplars. Now, yellow morels will just be sporadic in poplars, it's, and it's the young, uh, it's where they logged it off, and, and they're just young poplars, like anywhere from three to maybe eight inches in diameter. And, um, it, and it's it's just uh, leaf covered, humpy ground with popples. That's what black morels like. And, and the few of you that were here last year on last year's fray, we hit popple woods like that, and we smoked the, the blacks. And they're they're everywhere. And so um, that's one condition that I want you to learn. Now in the popples, oyster mushrooms like <coughs> like soft wood. So so fallen popple trees or standing dead popples is where we can find oysters. And occasionally maple, there is maple in here too. Um, but the popples are the, is where the oysters are. I found all the oysters this year on the popples. So if some of us want to go in through there, uh, it's possible there could be a, a stray yellow morel here and there in the popples. Um, but the black ones are really the ones that like the popples. That's the secret that a lot of people don't, they would, when they're looking, they're looking for more mature wood, they would never even consider going in the popples. And, and, uh, I've, I've been I've been smoking the blacks for a long time. I've got some spots that, that just don't even get hunted because uh, people don't know that popples is a good you know place to find the blacks. In the this, this tree in the middle is a popple then. Yeah, all, almost all of those trees in there are popple. Okay. Um, there's one black cherry straight in there, but most of those straight, uh, uh, real straight trees in there are popples. And they're, you know, they're, 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 they're thin size up to maybe eight inches. And they, they can be very thick uh, because, like I said, they log off and it's all the sprouts coming up. So, you know, some, some of them could be really thick in there, but uh, that's what black morels mm -hmm. like in the, in the earlier spring. And like I said, that's where the oysters are. Now, this is the mature, more mature woods over here on this side. And uh, so ash trees are what we'll be looking for. And there are some scattered ash, and there's, some, there's a clump of three really big ash right straight through there. Uh, well, yes. That's what we're looking for, on, uh, and that's our best bet for, for morels. And there's some pretty good slopes in here, and north slopes and stuff like that. And you know, that's, let's hope for the best. You know, the, these slopes that might might have had a little extra moisture, might have been protected from the freeze back earlier, and uh, you know, maybe we can get lucky and hit a few. So just take a no. okay, you the back of it. Yeah. Oh, I like it. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's cool. Next time somebody has <laughs> one of those. there are any black uh, morels left? <laughs> Ash right there. The one with some of the bark peeling because you can, the ash borer has killed the tree. And there's pieces of bark laying on the ground. Oh. Yep. If you look, if you look in here, you can see little holes. The ash borers. So they're gonna devastate all of these, huh? Yeah. So that's an ash tree. That's too bad. See my eyes. You see them on that dead log laying down? On up here. Nice fresh oysters there. Oh, good job. Anybody want to come see some oysters grown? So that's what you got to do. You got to stop, and then you got some more over this way, too. I don't know how old those are. Those are not oysters. Those something. aren't oysters? Yep. Those are. And now those you can put in a plastic bag, right? Yes. You don't have to put in the mesh. No, you don't have to. Save the mesh bag for. Yep. Something because you don't need to have to have the spores come out. Now. Yeah, the, the the oysters will just come right back in the same log till the log's rotten. So yeah, I cut them right at the base. Mm -hmm. Shake it a little bit to yep. get the bugs out. <clears throat> yeah, those are some nice. Pretty yeah, good eye. You you were like over there, over there. 
So you just gotta train your eye for this <clears throat> yep. for this white or, or, color. Whatever's sticking out. Different. You're good. You saw those will all right. So those will be good in our dinner. Absolutely. I heard you guys found some good oysters. Yeah. Yeah, Hayden sniffed them out right uh all right. pretty much instantly. We just found some up there. Yeah, pull some out and I'll get your picture. Here, Hayden. Yeah, that was all in one tree. Yeah. Oh, nice fresh ones, huh? Yeah. Oh, the bugs, the bugs we were giving them a try, but... Yeah, they'll, uh... They'll loosen up. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a nice fresh one. You found some good oysters too, huh? Did indeed. No, these are his. But I found some. Uh huh. <clears throat> uh, uh, they all. Um, these are his. But I found a tree full of like dead things. Uh huh. And then the woman just up the hill. Do you have anything on it? Yeah, those are dried, kind of dried fawn mushrooms. They're edible. They'll they'll liven back up with some water. These guys. Those are uh, edible cup fungi. What are they? They're called they're cup fungi. Oh. Yeah, they kind of grow like a flower species. rose kind of mm -hmm. shape. Yeah. The rest are just oysters, so I can keep these. Yeah, absolutely. Can I take a picture of them? Yeah, go ahead. I'll put See if I can find here. you a clump here. <clears throat> oh. These are called what? Cup fungi. Those are cup fungi, and these are fawn mushrooms. Fawn? Yeah. Uh huh. Those are cup fungi. Oh, and these are fawn mushrooms. Fawn? Uh huh. Cluteus cervinus. Oh, sure. Okay, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you kindly. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. You're welcome. First, first foraging in, uh, up in Michigan for oysters. Let me get you. <laughs> what have you got there? Nice and fresh. <laughs> Holy oh crap! Gosh. I got you started on the right on the right. Oh, you foot, did. I... And once you see them, <laughs> once you see find because I I left you for <laughs> you got... a long time. I couldn't find anything. Gorgeous. You, you got the eye and for I found, it now. And I found some, and then I found. She's got I found these. Them. I found these ones. I already had half of those, and I uh -huh. found these ones on the. Tree. Uh -huh. and, I see, and I was going to get these on this dead tree, and then I see a big, huge cluster. So I uh -huh. left those uh -huh. and went after that, and that's where I left my stick. <laughs> Thank you. All right, good. Because you remember when you showed it to me? Yeah. I'm just staring dead, uh -huh. and I couldn't find them. That's I couldn't right. see it. Now, those are some monsters there. Yeah, now I got some dry ones. Are those worth getting? Yeah, yeah. The dry ones. Can okay. I take a picture of yeah, the dr the oh, dried ones will the dry dried ones will reconstitute. Yeah, no problem. I think these are better eaten than royal. <laughs> they're they're good. They're definitely good. Very meaty. Oh. Yeah, it's a heck of a heck of a clump of them. Off of this bag here and smell it and, and let me know what it smells like. It's, yeah. Did it, did it, did it. I want to see what she thinks it smells like before I tell her. Okay, you. So just peel it like. Peel this. it and I'll smell that. I'll smell it. Leather. You think? I don't know. It, was I wrong? No, 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 you yeah, wrong. I'm just curious what you... Was that the same? Yeah. yeah. It smells the same. What does it smell like to you? I don't know. Let me help you. Cucumber or watermelon? Cucumber or watermelon rind. Yeah, you're right. Because normally if you say watermelon rind, then people go, I don't know what that smells like. Dryad salad. Dryad salad. It's, de it's right. decent eating. Because I know. It's nice and well. soup. I love chicken. Nice and I love chicken. Also known as pheasant bag. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. The other one. Is that what you hopped off and got on the trail? No, there was yeah, more oysters right back here. there. It was around this stump. That was right here. Yeah. They grow on stumps like that. Oh, oh, oh. I hardly ever ran into one. You know, there's got to be more acid soil for the wintergreen. Anybody spot anything at all yet? Negative. That was a heck of a. That was, wow. that was a heck of a. Mm -hmm. I, like I said, I left some on a log because it wasn't that many, and I've been listening for voices. So I was gonna say, "Come on over." Here, get these. 
Yeah. Hold it, I got some dried ones, but you probably don't want... Yeah. Go ahead. You can keep them in there, I guess. <laughs> That's fine. No, I... We've got quite a, quite a fine there of oysters. I really have the... Yeah. Heal a little bit. Heal a little bit. Oh, you're going to tell everybody. Yeah. Gonna go everybody go gather around and I'll explain what we found and... and uh, go back. Yeah. You want me to get the plate? Oh, how far is it? Get those. Yeah. Ew, there's a big spider. I was going to say, oh, yeah. there Just do it after lunch. That'll be fine. Mm -hmm. We'll hit it yeah. right real quick after. <laughs> you get done. It's really dry, though. Yeah, it's really dry. I'm having fun. Okay, so we got, uh, first of all, I'm sure everybody's wondering what these things are. Yeah, I stepped over many of those. Yes. In a survival situation, um, if you need, if you're stuck out in the woods, you can, you can make it on these. Um, these are squirrel corn or dustman's britches. They're these little rhizomes. It takes a while to dig them up, but uh, I mean, I dug those up in just a minute. So, you know, you know, if you spent 20, 30 minutes, you'd have a nice pile of them. But they are very potato-like and starchy, so you can uh, you could just uh, saute them or, or or even mash them and make you know, you know like mashed potatoes only mashed squirrel corn basically. But but they're pretty good. Um, very starchy and full of protein. Uh, I have no idea what these two are. I'll have to do some investigating. Um, probably some kind of summer mushroom that's come up. Um, this is a type of fiddlehead, but this particular one's not edible. Um, uh, I, would I, I would have to see where it came from to see exactly what it is. These are uh, cup fungi, brown cup fungi. They're edible. And um, they have a kind of a morel smell, actually, a little bit. And they're in the morel family. And then these are our uh, dryad saddle, uh, polypora squa squamosus, or pheasant back. They kind of look like a, you know, the the back of a pheasant. Have a, a like a watermelon or cucumber smell to the to them. And then we found all these oysters. Um, like I said, you can you can buy oysters in, in Kroger, but they're usually just little little baby ones like that, not not big mature ones. So we got very nice. I can't believe as dry as it is, we're finding such nice oysters. That's why I didn't think we'd find them here because it's drier here. Mm -hmm. And then these are uh, fawn mushrooms, and uh, I think that thunderstorm, you know, might have dumped like a week ago um, on Sunday, I think. So right out a week ago, um, there, some thunderstorms went through, and maybe it rained just enough for these for these uh, fawn mushrooms to come up because these are some pretty fresh ones. Most of them are. And they're fawn mushrooms or deer mushrooms. Uh, Pluteus cervinus is the scientific name. They grow on dead dead wood, and uh, all of these grow on dead wood, basically except for the cup fungi. And uh, uh, most everything that grows on dead wood this time of year is edible. So those are, that's quite a pile of mushrooms for the, in the morning. I mean, I wish they were morels, but we're going to have some good eating anyway. Yeah, we'll still have a lot of mushrooms. I got those, Chris. Is that a, is that a stump? Those is a stump too? Yeah. These. Almost one of those. These two here. We're on a stump. Oh. Yeah, that's. What about the cup ones? <laughs> <laughs> They're called they cup or cup? They, a lot of times, well, they usually grow in moss, and I see some moss attached to them. They, they like they mossy. Yeah. They're morels. Yeah. They're yeah. morels. Mm hmm. Typically. Yes, they're out the same time morels are. Yeah. Now, with the oysters, do they. The bigger they get, they still have the same flavor. Pretty or? much so. They don't um, like some things when they get bigger, like fish. They get bigger than ours. Yeah, I mean, I I would prefer the the younger, fresher ones as opposed to those. What I would do with these big ones is just dry them, um, let them completely dry out, and then you can just crumple them up and put them in soup and okay, stuff like so that. Okay, so like these size, we need them the, fresh. Those size we'll eat tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, and then these big ones. Those will are dry those out. really big ones like these right here that are. Eight ten inches across. I would pull them apart and, and let them totally dry out. Now, and these shrunk a lot when they draw dried. Yeah, they, they were probably big ones. Like not that maybe big. Not? They don't okay. shrink that much now. Okay. Yeah. No, those um, those uh, corn squirrel corns. Mm -hmm. I mean, could you eat it like that? I mean, like you know, where you would I eat take, a mushroom like you, that. I You or? could you could try it. Um, it you know if you want to try one just. You know the, the flavor, but yeah. but yeah, I would I would cook them to eat a lot of them. Okay. Um, but yeah, you can take you know it tastes a little bit like a potato. It has it has a flavor, so it's a pretty good flavor. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's what we got. We did pretty good. So we've got lunches and drinks for everybody. We got sandwiches. There's mustard and mayo, and um, there's cracked 
peanut butter crackers, bananas, pickles, uh, chips, drinks. You guys help yourself and have a nice picnic. God, I was so sure that those were good mushrooms. Anything, oh, anything you find, at all, said, just pick said, them and let them look at it. Yeah, anything awesome you find, anyway. pick them and we'll. They, they, hey, it's, you know a, they it's a misconception that a poisonous mushroom that gets put in the bag with with other mushrooms is going to contaminate the other ones. You have to ingest it. I can handle the poisonous mushroom. I can put it in my mouth and spit it out. It's not going to hurt you. It's got to go through your digest digestive system to harm you. So. Okay. It's only 40 calories too, so it's good for you. 45. 45. By the case. Yeah. I do. I had four yesterday. Yeah, four. Yeah, every, every time we go to Walmart, they have the rest. Nothing like a picnic in the woods on a pretty day. Nice, comfortable temperature day. Anybody else want a pickle? I got them open. That's when you walked in on the West Virginia situation. <laughs> oh, it was. Well, the, the reason I'm stopping is because these are marsh marigolds. This is another good edible. It's better when they're, it's early spring, like these are already totally opened up. When the, the leaves are, are edible, but also what's really tasty is the buds before they open up. Uh, and they're in a cluster, so you can just cut the stem off. Uh, and and uh, I don't see any that's not already opened up and bloomed though. So like, you know, this is an early spring, um, like a month ago, uh, you just, you can just uh, saute them till, or, or boil them, and uh, absolutely delicious edible, um, type, green type thing, just add a little bit of salt and eat them like that. Um, they have a lot of flavor. Will they grow back? I mean, absolutely. Because we've got, where I live, we've got... Cattails are another really good edible. Yep. If you cut them off, uh, they have a very tender center. The root is edible. Um, it's, it's, um, it's cat yeah. That center part, you can pull the leaves off and uh, get to the center, and it's it's like it like you said, redneck asparagus. It's very tender inside in the center, in that that very center part. Let me turn this off. This part right here. That tender part right there is, that's what's good. Well, why don't you use some of it then? Then you would like you whatever, steam it, just steam it, whatever, steam it yeah. or saute it. Yeah. It's, it, it actually uh, tastes a little bit like cabbage. Okay. And, uh, again, it's, it fills a lot of vitamins. And, now the root of it is, is a, it's a tuberous root and uh, it's, it's another one that's starchy. You can do you know, like potatoes or something, but you know, mashed potatoes. Yeah, I feel back a little bit. That, that tender stem is what's good right there. I've always heard that. I mean, I never knew what, you know, how to do it or whatever. They look like iris. Oh, it smells good. Yeah, it smells really good, doesn't it? This is a typical dead elm tree. Uh, the bark peels off of it. It's got a not near as coarse of a bark as, as uh, the ash. And the ash kind of comes off in chips. This comes off in whole sheets, um, and it's, it leaves a bald, uh, you know, tree or wood. But uh, this tree's probably been dead three or four years. When the when the tree when an elm tree dies, it has Dutch elm disease, and the the mycelium morel mycelium are already symbiotic and they're already in place. Uh, pheasant back. Is there a pheasant back on there? Want it? Yeah. There's a couple in here. They they like dead elms, actually, really old dead elms. Are those good enough ones? Yeah, yeah, those are really young, absolutely. <laughs> there you go.
Here, honey. Santa. Those are good. Thank you. Those are, those are really young ones right there. They ought to be tender. You're well trained, Grasshopper. Well, yeah. hey, wasn't that a good demonstration of it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some are not <laughs> elves, some are not There you go. All right. Just hang on to them for a second. Yeah. <laughs> So the, the, the elm dies, the year after it dies is usually a, uh, the best year for morels after it, and it, it, it lessens each year after. This one's probably been dead three or four years. In a really good year, there could still be a couple of morels under this tree. And the bigger the, the elm tree, the, uh, the, the, more, uh, the further out you go, and the more morels will be under it. My, what do you mean by under it? Is that 15? 15 feet out or so, yep. Uh, in certain parts of the country, like Wisconsin, it is almost only dead elms you're finding them under. Um, now here, most of the elms are gone. There's very few live ones left. And uh, you know, I found uh, a couple years ago, I found you know two or three pounds up here in Michigan under one dead elm, and uh, it can be a pretty good flush. And I'll, I'll tell you more about the elms with the the demonstrate or the presentation tonight. But that's a typical dead elm. It's another thing you just kind of got to memorize the bark. Chris, and, uh, but you're looking for the more. They were just. Yeah, really? these are so I know where to get ramps now more than you can even oh. use. You're in these ramps. They have all these wild leeks. Wild leeks or ramps. Just there is a difference. So ra these are ramps. They have a purplish stem. The leeks have a green stem. Oh. The leeks are, I mean, they're almost identical. There are um, wild leeks. There's wild leeks. It's, it's so all. These are ramps. The, the, these have a broader leaf than the leek. And uh, I mean, if you want to get technical, but it doesn't matter. You take this leek, to New ramp, York City, thing. they pay a lot of money for that. That's right. I got people that want to. I got people that want me to pick them for, and they'll, they'll give me seven dollars a pound for them. Jeez. Yeah. Loosen it up around it, and then cut the roots. If you keep working, you can. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Or would you pull the roots out? No, you, you can do it like that. That's well, fine. you said I needed a knife. I think. If I, yeah, you can keep working. It's just easier with a knife, quicker. Okay. Did I do it good? You did it good. All right. Nice clean ramp. So. So, so this is fine, like this. Absolutely. Yeah, the bulb is what you want anyway. Really? I mean, you when it, when they're really fresh in the early spring, you can eat the the green top too. Just mince them all together. Yeah. Oh, you can eat the yeah, sure can. Just like a green onion. Huh? That's the only the only thing I, think so. I saw a cooking show and. I didn't see it like this. I saw them when they were fresher. So mm -hmm. I would have even walked by these. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know. I've been going slow because I've been looking. Yeah. You get the mushroom queen. Well, I, you know, I told you I was into these ramps. But guess what? These ramps are, you know how you told me I had to use my knife? Yeah. These ramps, I'm pulling them out. Yeah. If it, it's so dry, you can do that. Yeah. I'm having, right here. Yeah, you sure did. Yeah. <clears throat> here you go. A little dried up morel because it's right next to the ramps. Huh? So how do you, you go ahead, show us how you pick it. You want to we'll leave right it there. Oh, all right. Keep looking around. You, so we are going to find more. I still don't see Should. it. See it right here. Oh yeah, look, huh? So you said we find them near the ramps it's sometimes. Right. Sometimes. Yeah, that's, wow. That's Where's a good, the edge? It's a good hillside. <laughs> yeah. The, I've been in playing a, in the dirt here. On the, you know, the, they'll come up sporadically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would have never found it yeah. without looking for the ramp. Right, that's what I was trying to do a couple of times. But see, I love how these ramps get in a little cluster like. Yeah, it's dried up. Right. So is it okay? Is do you want the ramps or yeah, not? Yeah, absolutely. That's a black? No, it's probably a, it's just, just, a, it's just a dried one. 
There's one right here too. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can you pick them when we dried and eat them? Sure. They're just just like the moisture that we we dried. Oh, so what are we gonna do? Are we gonna pick some water? We're gonna cut them or, yeah. do, or are we gonna pick them? Yeah, we're gonna slice them off. Slice them off. Mm -hmm. That's what. I'm... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> here you can you can once we get there's a whole cluster of them right here if you want some. Oh, oh you got a whole bunch. Yeah, I picked a bunch too. There's a nest. We all. As long as you tell them we find it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Clearwater Beach. <laughs> Whoa. Right so do we need to recompetence this any? Or? Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely let it soak a little bit. So is that absolutely our first one? That's first one. Yeah. I'm the accidental. And probably the last. I'm the accidental mushroom finder. Well, that's three in the entire contest, you know, last week, and it was on private land and everything else. They found seven to win the Oh, so contest. many people told me, oh, you're wasting your money coming up there. I know where they're at, and they're, I'm not going to tell you, and you've got to go on private land. Yeah. No, there, there's, plenty of, there's plenty of land here. Well, it, yeah, it's a friend of mine. All right, well, hold your morels up. Let me get your picture. Yeah, you got to have a picture. I did. Your first mushroom. <laughs> My first mushroom. All I'm right. so excited. <laughs> I said, what it's not it? a morel, but I'm not quite the loser I thought I was. Yeah. <laughs> Good. What is it? One of them on. Everybody, it's dry, pheasant, so. Pheasant back. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's found some, some kind of mushroom now. <laughs> yeah, and the, those ramps aren't, to me, those are not a bad find. No, they're good. You found your first morel? I found you go. one! Here you go. <laughs> go for it. I found one! This is your spot. This is Cindy's spot. She found her first mushroom. She's got some ramps and she found a morel. <laughs> this is hot. And look yeah. at how close this is to the this road. This looks yep. disgusting. This still fine. It <laughs> Let's it. Get it. You, you, you want the, her to cut it right? Yep, slice her right at the base. Right at the base, yeah, just above go. the dirt. The stem and everything's good to eat. Oh, oh no! Look. We'll we'll wash him up. Or you want to keep them all together? <laughs> yep. We'll, Look, huh? Let me get your picture. He, huh? He's gonna. <laughs> you're the woman. Not empty-handed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this was one of my good spots here for sure. The... Huh? Oh, oh, okay. That's how it it's a nice little knife. I like it. We're we're all all the way up to four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The, the manager at the motel is like, ah, oh, you, 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 you. I said, well, I would do some fishing and, you know, being up north. Found, in, in case, in case y'all hadn't heard, we found four morels. You no, did? you did yeah. not. Yes, we did. Really? Um, Julia found the first one. Oh, well, wow. she is. She's the, the one that, that came up with the right biggest now. bag this morning. She and then I found one and then, uh, Good uh, they're dried, but I mean, they're, you know, we sliced them off and, and they'll, they'll reconstitute. Oh, yeah. Julia's so. going to want to marry you right now. <laughs> Hell. Eddie's a forger. <laughs> I'll tell you. He's got a grab bag in there. Hayden, Is this wild, Hayden was really enjoying that. Nope. Nope, it's related to false Solomon seal. It has a little white flower on top of it. Mm hmm I took a picture of that, too. Mm -hmm. Hayden's over there digging up more ramps. Okay, yeah, I... there's some pretty good ramps over there. Yeah. Oh, yeah? I have just dried mushrooms, throw them away. You know what that makes? And then, Cindy found this one probably 10 feet away. <coughs> well, it's nice to see them anyway. Yeah. And, uh, I guess there were morels here. I told them the story in the uh -huh. sequences uh, here and there. The, the, biggest guy, the biggest person Those found the smallest one. <laughs> Those are blondes. No, they're blondes, yeah. Blondes. They are blondes? Mm-hmm. Small. That's, yeah, they, that's they dried up. That's Chris's right there. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> we're gonna go find a whole bunch now. And they, and they probably were. They pro. They probably were about that's that size before they dried up. Really? Yep. You can rehydrate those, Jane. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll rinse them off and. Yeah, that one's got a web. Uh, we'll, yes, we'll, web. we'll we'll yeah, wash it off. We'll take care of it. Yeah. We'll clean them off. We'll clean them off. We'll clean them off. You don't want to eat them. But just to let you guys know, you, we're about four people shy of last weekend's group, and you guys have 
struck the mother load compared to last weekend. <laughs> uh, we, we found, you know, some decent is oysters. Is, somebody was telling me about the parallel being a better. And then he walks away and he okay, finds one. Okay, this is, a, this is the good fiddlehead. This is the ostrich fern, it's fiddlehead fern. It has like brown paper type yeah. stuff on it. And you just it just scrapes right off. Um, unlike a lot of the ferns that have like fuzz on them that don't come, want to come off, this just comes right off and you got a nice piece of green. And it's real tender up inside the curl, so you don't have to worry about it. But the, the one dis, uh, determining factor on this, uh, it has a flat side to the stem and a ridge down, this, down the uh, center of the flat side of the stem. So if you find a, find a, a, you know, a fiddlehead and, it does, and it, it's not going to have the brown on it, that brown paper stuff, and it's, not, it's probably going to be rounded instead of the flat and not have the ridge and going edible? up there. The, the other ones are... There's a couple that are, but this is the best one. This one tastes... Leave the other ones alone. And take yeah, this one tastes a lot like asparagus, even better. Ooh. And uh, we, we found a lot of them in Pennsylvania and sauteed them up. We got and enough delicious. for everybody to get a sample? Or I think so. There's, an, there's enough to put on top of the pasta and everybody can get a taste. We might find a few more, a few more yeah. tomorrow. Well, at least we know what to look for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Almost looks like pastry. I know. Is <laughs> that just like layers of potatoes? Yep. Layers of potatoes with cheese. I made it gold. Go to the bathroom. I'll wait for it. Well, this is the first time I've ever done an outdoors uh, presentation. That's kind of interesting. That's perfect. Um, I think the weather's going to cooperate. I looked at the radar, and it looks like that little tiny shower just dissipated, so I think we'll be fine. Good girl. So we got plenty of good milkweed, a whole pile of ramps. We're already doing ramps over there. Morels from Wisconsin. Oysters. We got uh, dried saddle. We have fond mushrooms. We have one zarula, rooted zarula, and a whole pile of m more oysters. Don't forget we got Fisher. <laughs> and yeah, and we got Fisher. That's, he's a big help. <laughs> we have four actual true life Michigan morels. <laughs> okay, the farro you soak in hot water while you're preparing everything, and you uh, reconstitute some morels in uh, warm water. You save the broth, and you put a little bit of olive oil and. Uh, we put uh, uh, minced garlic and onions and saute those, and I, I have ramps in there as well. All right, now we got uh, the reconstituted morels in there with a little bit of butter and, and a little more olive oil. We're going to saute them for a while. And then I've got bacon on for the... I'm going to... I've got bacon all on for the... Uh, uh, milkweed shoots and the help beans and the water's boiling for the for the milkweed shoots. Uh, after these, saute some more the farro. Um, you put uh, marsala wine or any kind of cooking wine uh, in there a cup at a time and let it reduce down about three times. And then uh, then we add the farro. There. All right, we got the soup going now. You know, well, you know. <laughs> That's we got, uh, yeah. They're not, yeah. Stir. I mean, there's a lot of mushrooms in the lake. The jalapeno right. mixture up with sauteed uh, mushrooms, uh, ramps, so and uh, like like bacon bits, bits you know, like and, and sauteed mushrooms. No, I can't either. They're going to stuff the jalapeno with it. But you know what? I would even So once the milkweed is uh, boiled and very tender, uh, I strain it 
and then I'm going to dump it in the, back in the, uh, the pan with the bacon grease in it with a little bit of minced garlic. And put some bacon bits over top of it. Okay, there's the finished product on the milkweed. Everybody come and get yourself a bowl. and Save your bowl for the soup as well, but uh, get your fork and bowl. Try a little bit of milkweed salad. I don't think anybody here has tried any. They were saying they, they thought it was going to be... How, how does the weeds that we picked taste? Very good. <laughs> the, we <Delicious. laughs> the weeds in the landscaping. Very good. Surprisingly good. Uh-huh. I'm not even a spinach fan and I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. You like it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I put some ramps in there. That's first because I just haven't had ramps this this year, but I think that probably adds to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Heat and got our jalapenos going there. Soup is starting to boil. RO is cooking slowly. Yeah. Lighten. Well, I caught that on tape. What a nice day here in Michigan. All right, I can guarantee you this is going to be the best soup you've ever had in your life. I put my personal guarantee on this. It's got about 15 species of mushrooms. Uh, and it has some gnocchi in it. It's going to be some good stuff. Now, is this the it's got ramps. Put out it as a garnish? It's got ramps on top and also some green onions. You guys enjoy. How come you haven't eaten anything yet? How's the soup tasting? Excellent. You like it? Mm-hmm. It is. How do you like the soup? Really good. Chris, really good. It's great. Yeah. Amazing. Good stuff. Perfect. Thank you. Good. You can taste Appreciate all the different it. mushrooms. Can you? How are you liking the soup? It's very, great. very good. Good stuff. Did you? The gnocchi is a very good add. Uh -huh. and I've never Who had thought that. of that? Nope. Oh, she got it. It's like a pierogi. Pierogi? Yeah. <laughs> What'd you just say? Chris, Chris, I did not think you could make the soup better than last year. I just keep outdoing myself. I believe I? it is. Yes, you do. Yeah, I know. This is amazing. I know. Yeah. I added no peas. Well, I added a bunch of dried summer and fall mushrooms, too. Yeah, there's the flavor, it's, it's got more depth, there's even. There's hen of the woods and lobsters and two-collar bullets and all kinds of cool stuff in there. Oh, my. All right. The jalapenos are ready. Um, they're over here on this table. I can't even get a shot of them. I'm not. Ah, the iron. Uh, that guy makes it here in Michigan, actually. Oh, yeah. All right, guys, try some jalapenos. How many different courses are we having on this uh, gourmet meal? Endless. I don't even count. All right. You guys are still eating soup? You had, had tried jalapenos yet? I did. It was good. Good? Yep. My nephew Ben would and you were. Have you had jalapeno yet? No, I'm going for it because I had to have one more. I know. There's enough soup for an army. Sure is. I guess I'll eat one more then. I just only wanted one, but this one's hooked yeah. together, so I got to get it. All right. <laughs> Now we got some morel sizzling, and we have uh, Alfredo going on. We got pasta boiling, and the farro is still cooking. Okay, we have fried fried morels here. Yeah, I get a picture too. All right, I'm gonna try this the first morel to make sure it's okay. And, uh, <laughs> Something's wrong. <laughs> Something's wrong with these. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. What are they? These are morels. It's the fried oh. morels. Fried morels. Oh. Delish. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm switching over.
All right, got some more fried morels over here. Get them while they're hot. Holy moly, Chris! All right, it's uh, steak and cream sauce and Alfredo uh, pasta infused with all kinds of mushrooms. What happened to all the morels? <laughs> I don't what do you know. think? Yeah. <laughs> There's a couple left. You should be you should be insulted that a couple are left. Yeah. Right? They didn't take long, huh? They'll take care of those. <laughs> yeah, you should be insulted if you didn't finish them. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Wonderful. Thank you. This is Faro. Italian grain. Well, it's <laughs> just one spoonful. <laughs> it's not as tender as it was the first time because it's a different kind of faro. So normally it's way more tender than that. Faro. Real faro. Right on. Thank you, bro. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm already about to explode. <laughs> hey, you at least have to try it. Like I was telling them over there, it's, it's a different kind of faro than we had the first time. The Alfredo sauce. Man, is it. Yeah. But in the Alfredo, to die for? Yeah. Better than the recipe I would have passed on you to win. <laughs> How's everything tasting? Wonderful. Amazing. Incredible. How do you like the faro? I like it a lot. It's yeah. very, very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good bite. Uh -huh. Very, very good. I think it complements the earthiness of the mushrooms. It, I'm sounding the, like a... The, well, they, huh? uh, it really absorbs the flavors of the mushrooms, so right. that's why I liked about it. I've done the morel risotto, and that's in my cookbook too. But it, risotto doesn't absorb the morel flavor. I think this is very good. For you. I think it has a lot of fiber. Yeah. Mm. How do you like it? It's delicious. Thank yeah. you. Delicious as you. Thanks for all the other food. Good. Thanks for cooking us an awesome meal. Good. <laughs> how's it? How's it tasting? You like it? Oh man. It's very awesome. Good. Yep. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> like the farro. Yeah. Chewing. It really absorbs the flavor of the mushrooms. Yeah. Oh, it does. You know what it reminds me of? Quinoa, a little bit. Mm -hmm. oh. What's what? Reminds me of like a cross between like risotto and, and quinoa. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interrupt for one second. If, if uh, anybody wants ramps or uh, oyster mushrooms, um, please take them. <clears throat> um, help yourself. There's a whole pile of them here. And. Um, <clears throat> After you get that done, we're going to do a closing comments and. Yeah. Awesome time. Uh, last year was great. This year was great. You just can't go wrong. Uh, we're going to be uh, lifers, I believe. All right. Outstanding. You outdone yourself again, Chris. Had, had fun, huh? Uh, had some good food. Absolutely, man. And we're definitely going to see you again. Okay, good deal. You guys keep in touch. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. All right. We had a great time. Good. Learned great. a lot, yeah. About yeah. Uh, things other than mushrooms, even. You know, All the, the edibles. That yeah. was really. Had some different food this time. Huh? Yeah. Sure did. Yeah. 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 Lots different, of different people. Different every time. Like yep. the milkweed salad. Great. <laughs> yeah, I did. All right. You guys be safe. Keep in touch. All right. Well, thanks. Absolutely a great time. I learned a lot. Uh -huh. And uh, I think we'll be back. All right. All right. Take that food, food back to your wife. And I will. I'm sure she'll enjoy it. Right. I'm tell her to steal your recipes, too. Tell her to get some better shoes. I will. All right. I brought them to the table. I, I almost said, oh, I'm not going to bring those. Guys. So you guys are sold on the oyster mushrooms That's now, huh? Yeah. Was, yeah. There was a lot. We, I put a lot. These are already clean and ready to go if anybody wants those. But I mean, you keep those in the same bag with the other ones? I, I, I Just wash them all just together. Just wash them all together, together yeah. Again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. I was just saying, those ones were clean. They should have dried them out in the bag. And I didn't. Somebody should yeah. have. There's some Ziplocs over there. Oh, want some ramps? Yeah. What's that? Oh, Thank you so much. We learned so much. I had a great time. <laughs> I found a, a lot. I found a lot. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs>
Next year we're going to come back and get the morels. <laughs> and you lost your morel virginity. I did. Yes, you did. You found did. one. Take, 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 take your morels. Take your morels. Yeah, go there ahead. Take them all. Go ahead, go ahead take and take all. your morels in there. My morels. No, you Just take go ahead and take them all. You take them all. Yeah, there you go. You earned it. There it yeah, is. that's it. That's your morel. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I think you have enough there for a nice little soup yeah. or something. Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> yeah. Because those will those will swell well, up when they no, go get in the water. Well, yeah. Chris, um, <laughs> anyone else going to take some of these already cleaned? Extremely out? surprised how well I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and thank you for your patience. Um, hey, let's everybody give Julia a hand. She's the mushroom queen. She came out, came back with about a twenty-pound bag of oysters, and then found the first morel yesterday. Only because I was possessed. <laughs> I was possessed, and you guys all were worried about me. You didn't know about my background, so you thought I was dead in the woods. <laughs> yeah, she, she I just was, kept going until I found all the mushrooms. She was running late and came back with, with a big bag of oysters. All right, all right closing comments. Uh, we had a great time. Uh, the really food was fun. amazing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, really good. It worked out good. wonderfully and learned we're coming, a lot. We're coming back next year. All right. Thank you. We'll find more morels next year, I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you take Thank care. You. Thanks a lot. Some of these did